Gambling is one of the most popular forms of entertainment in the world. Gambling can be defined as the act of wagering something of value, usually money, with the goal of making a profit on the initial wager. In popular cultures and media, gambling is often presented as a thrilling activity and often enjoyed by many. However, gambling is not designed to benefit those who gamble, but instead it benefits the house because in the long run, the house always wins. So one of the key questions that researchers across the world are trying to actively investigate is why do gamblers continue to gamble in the face of losses despite the knowledge that the house always wins? In today's video, let's dive deep to answer this question. In 1905, renowned psychologist Edward Thorndike proposed an intuitive yet very influential framework called the Law of Effect, which stated that the outcome of a specific action attenuates or exacerbates the occurrence of the action in future. Thus, actions resulting in rewards are repeated, while those following punishments are attenuated. This framework influenced the development of yet another very influential theory in psychology called the Operant Conditioning Theory, proposed by the renowned American psychologist B.F. Skinner. In line with the law of effect in his theory, Skinner also proposed that operant behavior is controlled by its consequences. Based on this logic, Gamblers should decrease their gambling engagement following losses, considering that losses are punishing outcomes. But what we observe is a paradoxical behavior, and the answer to why we observe such persistence despite losses came from the discovery that Skinner and his colleagues and students made in 1957. In a series of experiments with animals, they discovered that the behavior of an organism could be modified via reinforcement schedules. And pecking the disc produced a reward. Then the behavior of pecking could be studied in relation to how often that reward was offered. Or in Skinner's terms, what was the schedule of reinforcement? The main thing is what's what we call schedules of reinforcement. Reinforcement is what the Latin calls reward. And you can schedule it uh, so that a reward occurs every now and then when a pigeon does something. We usually use a response with a pigeon pecking a little disc, a little spot on the wall, and you can reinforce with food. But you don't reinforce every time, you every, perhaps every tenth time, or perhaps only once every minute or something like that. There are a very large number of, of schedules. A reinforcement schedule is any procedure that delivers a reinforcer to an organism according to a well-defined rule, such as delivering a reward following a certain amount of time or in a certain ratio. Skinner and colleagues proposed four main types of reinforcement schedules, namely fixed interval schedule, variable interval schedule, fixed ratio schedule and variable ratio schedule. Skinner and colleagues discovered that each of these schedules shape and conditioned our behavior in a specific way. But the one schedule that resulted in the most steady and persistent behavior, which was very resistant to extinction, was the variable ratio schedule. And Skinner discovered that it is this particular reinforcement schedule which was more powerful than any other schedules and explained why negative outcomes like losses in gambling resulted in persistent gambling instead of attenuating this behavior. Now, in this video, we will dive into the variable ratio schedule but if you are interested to learn more about the other types of reinforcement schedule and the operant conditioning theory as well, then check out these two videos from our channel to dive deep into these topics. The variable ratio schedule proposes that 
a behavior is rewarded after an unpredictable number of responses. This unpredictability induces an anticipation wherein the organism always expects the reward to be presented in the next trial. It is this anticipation and expectation of securing a reward that makes the behavior persistent despite the lack of rewards. And Skinner proposed that it was this mechanism that underlie the persistent gambling behavior we observe amongst gamblers. In practice, modern gambling machines implement a variation of variable ratio reinforcement schedule called the random ratio reinforcement schedule, which slightly differs than the variable ratio schedule originally proposed by Skinner. Let's understand the difference. According to Skinner's theory, the variable ratio schedule has an average range within which the animal can more or less predict the occurrence of the reward. For example, if the VR schedule of a roulette wheel is 10, it means that over a large number of gambles, a player can expect to receive a reinforcement such as a win after an average of 10 responses. However, Within the individual gambles, the exact number of responses required for the reinforcement to occur can vary. This is where the unpredictability and anticipation element in the VR schedule stems from. This means that sometimes it might take the player more than or fewer than 10 responses to get the reward. But over time, the average remains constant. The random ratio schedule, on the other hand, posits that the probability of gaining a reward in every gamble remains independently determined. Thus, unlike the variable ratio schedule, the rewards delivered under the random ratio schedule are truly random and cannot be estimated on an average per se. This random ratio induced independence of outcomes observed in gambling machines contributes even more strongly to the unpredictability of the reward delivery, in turn strengthening the anticipation of the reward and by extension the persistence in the face of losses. Such increased persistence often leads gamblers to chase their losses despite long losing streaks, in turn resulting in severe negative consequences in their financial and social life and negatively impacting their psychological and overall well-being. A key question that arises is why does this anticipation of reward outweigh the cost of persisting in the face of losses? Currently, ongoing research assessing the neural and cognitive correlates of gambling are providing us with some insights into this. Let's dive into the evidence and try and answer this question. Dopamine is a neurotransmitter produced in the substantia nigra, ventral tegmental area and the hypothalamus regions of the brain. It has been long documented to play a central role in evoking pleasurable experiences, reward processing and motivation. And a growing body of research is uncovering the pathways via which it amplifies gambling persistence. Functional magnetic resonance imaging studies using gambling tasks have reported an increased activation in the brain regions of nucleus accumbens and ventral striatum. Specifically, the activation of the ventral striatum is greater among those diagnosed with gambling disorder as compared to healthy controls. The increased activation in these brain regions signals an increased release in dopamine during the reward anticipation phase, a phenomena called as the anticipatory dopamine response or reward prediction. Additionally, a number of studies have reported increased phasic bursts of dopamine release as a function of reward uncertainty 
This anticipatory dopamine response therefore tends to encode reward anticipation and uncertainty as a motivating experience, in turn maintaining gambling persistence even in the face of losses. Another possible mechanism maintaining the gambling persistence is the intermittent delivery of gambling wins. The intermittent delivery of a win during long losing streaks is often encoded as a positive outcome better than the experienced losses. Such a situation wherein the experienced outcome is better than the predicted outcome is referred to as experiencing a positive reward prediction error. And experiencing such positive reward prediction errors tends to be accompanied with a phasic burst of dopamine which in turn tends to motivate persisting the behavior that led to experiencing the positive outcome in the first place. This reward anticipation and reward uncertainty coupled with intermittent delivery of rewards like wins together work to maintain an increased dopamine release cycle which keeps motivating the gamblers to persist despite losses. At the behavioral level, studies indicate that the way gamblers reason about the outcome delivery also maintains their gambling persistence in the face of losses. Despite the independence of gambling outcomes, as per the random ratio schedule, gamblers tend to erroneously reason that the outcome streaks are dependent and influence the further outcomes. This erroneous reasoning leads them to make biased predictions about future outcomes. For instance, a large body of research conducted in both lab settings as well as field settings have indicated that gamblers tend to persist in the face of losses based on the belief that losses will reverse into wins, a phenomena referred to as the gambler's fallacy. Gambler's fallacy tends to arise out of a belief in the law of small numbers or the erroneous belief that small samples must be representative of the larger population of samples. According to this fallacy, the streaks must eventually even out in order to be representative, therefore rationalizing persistence in the face of long losing streaks. While engaging in gambling recreationally for fun and entertainment is not harmful at all, excessive engagement in gambling can spiral one out of control, resulting into a vicious cycle of anticipating an uncertain reward and falling prey to the next spin is a win mindset via the pathways that we covered today. This makes it extremely important for us to remain cognizant of both the intensity and the frequency with which one engages in gambling in order to make sure that gambling remains at the level of entertainment and does not spiral out of control to become addictive in the long run.